bums just got wet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back to our channel. And today's video is about weight management in flying birds of prey and flying weights of full curry birds and all about it really. Okay, so flying weights and weight management is a relatively new thing in Fulcrum. Fulcrum has been around for 4,000 years and until quite recent generations, falconers didn't weigh their birds to get an insight into how they're working and how their mindset is on that day. They used the, the attitude of the bird, they felt the bird's condition, and they understood and knew their birds as individuals. Weight management, for sure, is a massive godsend now, and it means, if you like, less skilled people can safely fly and hunt with birds of prey. And I I wouldn't say I, fly all, I weigh all of my birds every single time I fly them, but I certainly keep a close eye on it. So condition-wise, the attitude of your bird. Now, when I started Fulcrum in my first goshawk, the books talked about Yurak, and Yurak is the mindset and the conditioning of that bird when it's really ready to hunt. And, and with most things like goshawks, that's hurting. This bird's got some attitude today. Their hackles will come up when you pick them up to fly. As soon as you pick them up, they know they're going hunting. Their hackles will come up, they're, they'll ruffle their feathers, and there's the slightest squeaky sound, a squeaking gait, they'll crush in on the glove with their talons. It's setting off that kill instinct, hearing that squeaky noise, and they're really conditioned to fly and hunt, and their, their tummy is telling their brain, we've got to kill something and eat it today. We need a good crop and a good feed up today. So other things, other than their attitude they're presenting, which I must say is often very different in today's falconry. With the use of telemetry, we fly our birds generally in a higher weight, and we've come to understand the thinking of birds in a slightly different way. And we know we can fly birds now less keen than maybe I did 30 years ago, and still achieve the same drive and attitude, the same prey drive to catch and kill their prey. Zeus here, we've just been out with him. You can see him stamping on the glove. That's when he's ready for more. He's stamping and crushing the glove, and that's his sort of attitude, stomping, I still want to chase them. We've just done six lure runs with him, a drag lure. And although I weighed him, he was bang on his flying weight today, which over seven years, eight pounds, eight ounces for this guy, is super strong and fit, and still really keen to hunt. To hunt. Oops. <laughs> still super strong and fit and still really keen to hunt a great prey drive and importantly as a falconry bird I don't want to watch a wild eagle fly I want to be my partner equally he's keen to return for the glove knowing it's the best place to be and maybe there's a tidbit of food there so we did weigh him and although he's flown he's still keen for more he's got a crop here now that's his food he's eaten on the on the lurens but we're also we don't pet and stroke falconry birds you're just if you're constantly doing this you're just rubbing all that waterproofing oil the bird takes ages to put in its feathers so we don't stroke them and pet them but for sure i always get my hunting birds used to having my hands on them so they're not stressed out or worried about it because i want to feel the keel the keel bone here so imagine you've got your chicken sunday chicken or your turkey you're carving it this is the breast bone that sticks upwards when you're carving your dinner this bone here you want to keep an eye on that when you weigh your bird feel the keel bone, learn how it corresponds with the bird's weight and you're feeling how sharp or rounded the keel of the bird feels. The sharper it is, the less fat it's got on it. And you're also feeling that meat either side of the keel bone. Is it squishy and flabby like my muscles or is it starting to get firm and hard like a bodybuilder because your bird's getting fit and you've put that work into that fitness. Equally, the under wing muscles here. Now on Zeus, only three weeks ago these muscles they were all squishy. A whole summer of getting flabby and flaccid and doing very little exercise. These muscles now, whilst, do you know what? They could about, going over previously, double in size. So his muscles are still building up. They've gone rock hard because now the muscles have been worked and we're getting that fitness there. So we're feeling the weight of the bird physically, the condition, and we're feeling his muscles, are they, how are they toned? Or does he still need a lot more exercise to tone this bird up? We want this keel, this keel bone, to be as rounded as possible, not sharp and sticking out, as rounded as possible while still achieving really good recoil response and a really good prey drive. That's the balance we're going for. 
So again, read the body language. He's been out, he's had a really good exercise spell. We exercised him to the point of almost exhaustion, but he's still stomping around. He wants some more food and he wants another kill. You can tell a lot by looking at your bird, reading its behavior and running your hand over key areas as well as weight management. Let's pop him away, get back to you in a minute. So it's really important, especially if you're new to falconry more than ever, or if you've got a bad memory like me especially, keep a log of the bird's weight and condition and make some notes. So Galileo is a great grey owl. So we're gonna mark the time that we flew or fed that bird, and that'll correlate then to where we are tomorrow. We're gonna log today's weight, and importantly, we're gonna log what we fed it today. And that way, tomorrow, we can work out how that amount of food and the kind of food affected its weight tomorrow. And we can make some comments here. We can write, flew poorly, wasn't interested, or flew like a demon, absolute missile. And at least that way, we can also see partly how its weight corresponded to its conditioning and its attitude. So keep these, because very soon, you can look back on a, on a graph of your bird's weight versus food versus performance and you'll soon get a, an idea of how those things start to correlate. Again, use the bird's conditioning, feel the bird's muscles, judge it by its attitude. Use all these things as a whole, a holistic approach. Don't just be set upon weight as everything to do with your bird's flying condition and its flying weight. Okay, okay, so if we're talking about the weights and flying weights of birds of prey, We've got to talk about how we're going to weigh them, aren't we? Now, we're not going to use balance scales. That's for when you go away and you want to weigh what your suitcase weighs. We're not going to use floor scales and deduct the weight of the bird because they're not always accurate. We need some dedicated scales for your bird. Now, there's various options. I'm going to show you the two we, we use. There are other options. Converted balance scales. Now, you can get these from charity shops, second-hand shops, and you've got to do a bit of DIY, and you've got to convert the bowl that weighs whatever was in their sweets before and cooking, cooking amounts to a perch and you've got to then get that perch to balance with the other side when there's no weights on there. And then you need a set of weights and you need to be going down for most birds to a quarter ounce and if you're flying micro raptors you've got to get a bit smaller than that. But for the average birds like Harris Hawks and upwards, a quarter ounce, half ounce, ounce and so on. If you find a set of these scales in a charity shop or a second hand shop Bear in mind, if it doesn't come with a scale, with the weights, a full set of weights can actually be quite expensive, so bear that in mind. Or, we can go modern, and we can use, excuse me, digital scales. And the great thing about these are, you've got a choice of unit here. So we use grams and pounds and ounces, depending on the birds we're weighing. If you're flying micro raptors, sparrowhawks, kestrels, that kind of thing, to be quite honest, I tend to stick in ounces, but if I was hunting those micro raptors where the weight management is even more critical, I'd do what the staff do here at Icarus, I'd swap over to grams instead of pounds and ounces. It's far more detailed and much better for the micro raptors. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you weigh your bird in, realistically, as long as you, you know what you're talking, you, you can put that in your head and you're doing the same thing every day. It's no good weighing these scales, and then we use the vultures scales, and then tomorrow using these, and then maybe tomorrow weigh the same bird on these, because they won't necessarily all correlate. You need scales that weigh in increments accurately. It doesn't matter how far out the scales are. It doesn't matter if I'm weighing a four ounce bird on here, and the scales switch on, and they, and they zero out at a pound. As long as those increments weigh accurately every single day and you plot that down. The numbers mean nothing as long as you measure them and they're accurate. I hope that makes sense. Now, these can be quite expensive. If you buy them already converted from falconry suppliers, they are very expensive. These Salter scales, I've done an upgrade now, they're about £15 off Amazon. Make your own perch. How simple is this? You don't need AstroTurf or anything on there. It's not going to spend its day on there as long as it can grip on. This will automatically zero because it's glued onto here with some silicon. Amazon, Salter scales, 15 or 20 quid. My last set lasted me 25 years. Believe it around, they were still around in those days. And they are perfectly accurate. And you can cross-reference them. And you can double-check with a 
something of a known weight. Some people don't like them because they feel in cold, damp weather the, the zeroing isn't quite accurate. With these, so far, we find them absolutely brilliant and I have no hesitation at all in recommending those Salter scales with a bit of modification. So remember, your scales need to weigh accurately in increments. It doesn't matter what they zero at. And you need to keep a, a daily log of the weight versus the food and the, the type of food you give that bird and, of course, how it performed on that day. When you weigh your hook, they get very quickly into a routine like any animals do, habit and routine, and they'll hop onto the scales, onto the scales very quickly. Now, unless you're going to shut the door of your weighing room, keep hold of the jesses or the leash to some degree. But if you weigh your hook with its jesses and its hood and its swivel attached, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as you weigh them with those things on every day, it doesn't matter what your swivel weighs until you change it, they are all part of the weight, aren't they? It doesn't matter what your bird actually what the numbers say, remember. It's about those increments and those accuracies. So if the bird's hooded, oh, by the way, I'm bleeding. If the bird's hooded, you're gonna to have to step it back, press the back of its legs onto the scales because it can't see to hop on, can it? So let's do that again with actually with the scales on before I bleed out. Step it on. pound ten point two these scales do decimalize pounds and ounces which is crazy but one pound ten point two doesn't matter if the hood weighs an ounce it doesn't matter what his bell weighs what these weigh as long as he's wearing them every day when I weigh him that those increments uh, accurate weights will be perfectly fine now you might notice we're going here it's looking a bit grubby because while it's minus three, minus two, we're not putting bass out for these birds, no way, not for Harry Sorks. We'll let that, we'll get, we'll let that weather milder, I can't even speak, I'm so cold. We'll let the weather get a little bit milder, which is due to this week. So don't worry, a little bit, a little bit grubby, not ideal, but better than getting cold, really cold. That's just out of interest, see? One pound eight, one pound ten. As it happens, one pound ten and a quarter. As it happens, they're almost spot on. But it doesn't matter if these scales tell me a different story to these scales, as long as I decide to use one of those scales every day and I don't swap and choose. A little tip, when you weigh your bird on a daily basis, every other day, just put a little smear. I've got to say, that's not my favorite type of leather grease, but times are hard. And it's what we've got. But a little bit of grease on that leather equipment every couple of days. It'll keep it nice and supple. If you leave it two or three weeks, the grease and the oil never really goes back into really hard leather. If you look after good quality leather equipment, I've got anklets on one of my Harris Hawks. I think they've been on there 10 years. Perfectly fine. But you've got to look after your kit and you've got to buy good kit to begin with. Remember, when your bird's on the scales, even if it's hooded, it can suddenly fly off or jump off for sure. So... If you're weighing a bird with its leash and swivel, personally, I hold the end of the leash and I let the swivel dangle down and the weight includes the swivel and the hood or whatever else equipment the bird is wearing. Just remember to be consistent. Now, flying weight isn't static. So I told you Zeus, the golden eagle, weighs his best weight, his weight-wise is eight pound eight ounces, but he can hunt and work very well at eight pound 12 ounces depending on how he arose to that weight. So you've got the going up weight and the coming down weight. So eight pound eight ounces on a bird that you're gradually bringing down in weight, the bird's keener and hungrier at eight pound eight ounces because it's, you're bringing its weight down. It's on a diet, so it's hungrier, so it's more keen to work. You could have it at eight pound eight ounces when yesterday it was eight pound four ounces, but had a really good feed up. And today it's now eight pound eight ounces. Might not perform as well. The weight's the same, but its tummy's probably still full, or it's certainly got enough calories in there that its brain's saying we don't really need to do, make much effort today. Weight can mean different things depending on how your bird arrived at that weight today. The most important thing about weight, which most novices, certainly a lot of novices don't get, and a lot of falconers themselves that have been around a while, they don't get. When you train your bird, 
you might find it starts performing really well at a certain weight. You've got it out of the, the breeding aviary and you've gradually brought its weight down. You took off some of that puppy fat. It started to come out on song and do a bit of work. Maybe it's flying to the glove and you think, oh, today it's flying to the glove from anywhere instantly. I'll lock that weight because that's its flying weight. It probably is well below what its flying weight will end up being. But if you just decide that's its flying weight and every day you try and get your bird to that weight and that's when it flies, You've been training it in the late summer. The weather's warm, it doesn't need any calories in the evening to keep warm. And then all of a sudden, in the cold of winter, that bird is burning loads of energy just to try and stay warm. And it's not got as much energy at that weight to actually perform and fly. When your, your newly trained bird performs well at something, start trying that task at a gradually increased weight and see where its performance tails off. Do not hold your bird at a static weight until you're really sure about how it performs over a few weeks or a few months. Most birds, I'll give you an example. A friend of mine, he took on his first red tail hawk. He did a really good job this year. Now in the summer, to trigger that bird's hunting response, the bird, it was a male red tail, it went down to, oh my goodness, I can't remember. I think it was one pound, eight and a half ounces just for one day, gradually reduced its weight until it would chase a drag rabbit carcass. And once that, that hunting response was triggered and it realised that was food and that was its job, it had to catch its own food and not just live off handouts, that bird then, three or four weeks later, was chasing wild rabbits at one pound 14 to one pound 15 ounces. And now we're into winter, that bird's hunting weight is about two pound two ounces. Can you imagine it now at one pound eight ounces in the freezing winter? You just sometimes have to bring their weight down to trigger a response, to kind of let them learn what it's about, that particular task, and then very often you can increase that weight dramatically. Never hold your bird at the first weight it started performing. It's a real easy thing to do, and you're never gonna get the best from your bird at all. One more thing to touch on is that when would-be falconers talk to falconers and they'll say, I really want to start a falconer. I might get something like a, a sparrow hawk or a kestrel because they're small, aren't they? And, and being small, I should manage them easier. I don't, really, I don't think I could cope with a big hawk. You know, I want to start with a kestrel. All falconers will say, no way, big mistake. Start with something the size of a, a buzzard or a Harris hawk. And that can seem counterintuitive if you're a beginner. No, I, I don't know if I can handle a big bird. I want to start with something small. Small birds, flying weights are critically fine. So the difference between a Merlin performing really well or dying of starvation could be an ounce. The difference between it flying away and sitting in a tree and not doing anything could be half an ounce the other way. Compare that to Zeus, my golden eagle. I've flown him at seven pound 12 ounces and I've flown him at over nine pounds. Now he's done very well at nine pounds some days. If it's nine pounds coming down and he's really keen and hungry, at seven pound 12 ounces, he's got no energy and he's at the right at the end of his flying weight, very much too low. But it took me a whole flying season to get to his flying weight that's really consistent as a flying weight, all other things being equal, of eight pound eight ounces. You might have to vary that weight. Don't keep it static as certainly until you know how that bird will perform at higher weights. It's really important. Small birds, really hard to manage because you've got micro parameters of weight management and feeding has to be so importantly tuned to that. Bigger birds, you can get away with a lot of things. A lot, well not a lot of things, but you can get away with making mistakes on the flying weight. You're not gonna kill the bird and you're not gonna lose the bird in the same kind of sense. So bear those things in mind. And the biggest thing I'd like you to take away from this is weight isn't everything in comparison to conditioning. Flying weights certainly aren't static in the first year of that bird's life. And one last thought, which is a real man thing and a real novice thing. The flying weight of your bird means jack all to its actual performance in the field. Birds that fly smaller than birds that fly bigger can be better than any bird that weighs more. It doesn't mean anything. All it means is bigger birds obviously can catch bigger quarry by the physical size, but their attitude to hunting and flying, forget what your bird weighs. A good bird's a good bird, irrelevant of its weight. Hope you enjoyed that video. Like and subscribe 
and catch up with all our other videos on our channel. Another thing to think about when we talk about birds' weights is the actual food they're getting. The quality and the type of food can have a dramatic response or effect on how the bird's brain works and how its mentality is set that day. If you feed nothing but day old cockerels, let's say, and then you switch to something high in calories like hare meat or rat or quail, it can have a completely different effect on how that bird works. And to give you an example of that, a good friend of mine, Carl, a colleague of mine at Icarus, he's now got an interviewed goshawk, a female goshawk. This is her second season, and he'll tell you himself, last season and this season, it's had trouble getting consistency. The bird will fly a, a pheasant, but then it'll pull off quite quickly so it can sit in a tree and scan below for one that it can drop on. Its response to his glove on the recall has been really variable over the last two seasons. And weight has made no difference at all to that bird. Several ounces up and down in weight has made no real difference to that bird's response or behaviour. Last week, he's fed the bird nothing but rabbit. Now, rabbit meat means you can fill the bird up and give it lots of food, but it's actually reasonably low in calories. He's been out two times running now, back to back, after feeding this bird nothing but rabbit meat for a week, and it has turned into a completely different bird. He's flown it at the top end of the weight he's been flying. It's flying pheasants like it absolutely wants them more than anything else just as good if it misses and pulls up a tree its recall from anywhere is instant the weight's the same but the type of food has changed and that's all things you can keep track of when you use your graph you use your your form or your notes to look back on every day you're recording the weight you're recording how much food and the type of food and you're recording that bird's response in the notes next to that and that'll give you something to really look back on and even with Zeus, I've been flying him about seven seasons now. When I look back in his diary to the first two or three years, I actually found some of the things I would do now to sort of tweak things. I've already tried and I've actually forgotten. So I always refer to those notes. It's, a, it's an interesting thing to see how your bird develops and you will learn a lot from them. Hope you've enjoyed the video. We'll catch up soon.